When it gets hot, and believe me, it gets really hot and dry here in the Adelaide Hills, I need to water my veggies daily, if not more, to get them to survive. Now, that's a bit of a challenge when I'm busy working or off travelling. So I've got a way that I can grow veggies and get them to survive on just once a week watering, even in the hottest weather. Now, I'm doing this using wicking beds. I've made wicking beds before out of old apple crates, but the challenge with them is they have a limited life. The new style of wicking bed I'm building is out of intermediate bulk containers, known as IBCs. These are purchased from my local transport company for about $150 each, but I get two beds out of them. It's important to know the history of use of your container. These are food grade plastic. They've been used to transport olive oil or wine and not chemicals. And best of all, they're going to last a really long time. First off, cut the IBC in half. Now, to do this, I'm using an angle grinder, which creates quite a few sparks. So make sure you use the proper safety equipment. The angle grinder cuts through both the metal frame and the plastic, but it's a bit fiddly and it takes a bit of time. Once you've separated the two halves, undo the screws that hold the metal cage to the plastic tank. This enables me to turn the cage upside down so the sharp cut edges are facing down and the top edge is nice and smooth and isn't a hazard. Now this is half of what I've just cut. It still needs to be rinsed and I need to level it and the other half still in the shed needs some more work on the frame but this one's levelled, ready to go. First off, you need to put an overflow point in. In my previous wicking beds, I've done it where the soil layer joins the reservoir layer. But what I've actually found is by putting it right down the bottom, it gives you more flexibility. I've used proper irrigation fittings and silicon them in. That's going to give me longevity and make sure that this doesn't leak. And then by adding this elbow, it gives me the ability to be able to drain all the water out of the reservoir layer if I want to, say in the middle of winter. When it's upright, it drains at the normal overflow point. Cover the base with a thin layer of scoria. Now I'm adding the inlet pipe. It's simply a piece of PVC pipe cut to length and I've slotted it into some agricultural drain. That's slotted pipe and what this does is allow the water to come out evenly in the bottom of the reservoir layer. I'm securing it in place with a couple of bricks. I'll take them out once I fill it properly. Finish filling the reservoir layer with scoria to cover the ag pipe and level it off. Make sure you leave about 30 centimetres above the top of the scoria so the soil layer can wick properly. In between the scoria and the soil, I put down a sheet of geotextile fabric and that will stop the soil from going down and clogging the reservoir layer. For the soil mix, I'm using a blend of good organic soil and compost. The wicking action will only work properly if there's a high proportion of organic matter. And now it's finally full, I can have some fun planting. I'm actually going to plant some repeat harvest lettuces and they love being kept moist and so they're perfect for wicking beds. Once I've planted the lettuces, you need to fill the reservoir and how you know when it's full is it will flow out of the overflow point. As well as that, you need to thoroughly saturate the soil from above first off. And I would be aware that with young plants for the first couple of weeks, I'd still water from above because sometimes their root systems are too small to be able to start the wicking process properly. Then once established, most plants will tolerate just a top up about once a week in summer. How you know you when to top up is simply to look in the overflow point and if the water's run out, you know you need to fill the reservoir. Now obviously we need to mulch, just like we would in the garden, to stop the top of the soil from drying out. I'm also going to put some wooden boards on them. This insulates the bed, but it also makes them look nicer. I've still got several more wicking beds to make. 
But why don't you have a go at making a wicking bed from an IBC? It's a great way to grow veggies in a hot, dry climate. Happy wicking!